be in chapter eight, I should say frames. I was noticing that the slides don't exactly match their slides, so I was a little bit off on that, but some of it's the same. I think we don't have every slide. Um, the, the, uh, chapter eight does walk you through how to do a tool frame and a, and a user frame and a job frame. And then we'll get a little bit into chapter nine today too, also in motion instructions. All right, so we kind of know the basics of frames right now. So frames basically is an intersection of three planes. I know they're normally represented as three lines, but those three lines, if you take two, any two of them, you can draw a plane between them. That's why they're talking about three planes. These planes go on and on in space, right? So they cover infinite area, but the robot only has so much reach. So this plane is defined by whatever amount of reach that ro robot can make within that plane. The intersection of the three planes, the origin of the frame is what you normally see represented by the three lines, the X, Y, and Z, forming your Cartesian coordinate system. The main frames in a Fanuc system are the, the world frame, that's the default frame of the robot. That's basically in the base of the robot. Um, again, in, in a Fanuc, world frame can't be moved. Um, but there's user frames that you can reference things to, which are basically your your work objects in the ABB world, the same thing. Um, and then there's a tool frame that's obviously the offset off the mechanical interface plate or the tool mounts. Um, and again, you can do a, uh, they call it a four point method or a six point method in the Nook world. A four point method, you're just gonna translate that tool frame out to the center point of the tool without changing the orientation. And the six point method is going to allow you to change the orientation of it. We'll get into that when we get start talking about tool frames. Um, there's this thing called remote tool center point, um, which is basically creating a tool that's out there on a fixed uh, surface somewhere. And you're gonna, you're gonna translate your tool center point to that tool but it's not actually a mechanical interface offset at that point. It's a remote tool center point. So let's say you had a grinder on a table or something to that effect that you're gonna be moving a part over. You can actually base your um, motions based on the, the, the tool that's sitting out there on the bench. You can move your robot to a point on the tool. All right, so tool frame is the default. Is the center of the face plate again. The origin of the frame must be moved to the new TCP location. Um, so basically what's what it's saying is that the center of the face plate is your, your offset point where you're starting from. Your new TCP is going to be moved from that out to the new TCP location. All measurements are relative to the origin of the frame and the origin is called the tool center point, which defines location and orientation of where the work is done. All right, so the HT programs taught in one tool frame will not run in any other tool frame. Uh, I don't know what HT stands for. Basically, it's a, um, normally I think they call it a TP program if it's, if it's a tool uh, programs, uh, if it's, if it's taught, taught on the teach bench, excuse me. Uh, HT, I'll have to look that one up. I can't remember what, why it's called HT. Um, I don't, I'll have to look it up. Anyway, like I said yesterday, there are several different forms of programs on the um, Pinook, and it, I forgot to look it up again from yesterday, but I know that the TP is uh, Teach Pennant, uh, and then the HT has something to do with the Teach tool also, but it's a different form. I'll look them up after we get done talking here and before we cut off at the end of the day and we'll let you know. In a six point tool frame uh, method, the user can just find the plus X and plus Z direction and that helps you define your orientation. So if you wanted your X to come straight out from your center of your tool instead of uh, your Z, or actually your Z is gonna be a trans, if your tool center point is not being translated straight out from the flange, and translated down at an angle like on a welder, then 
you're going to want to reteach your tool the direction so that your V is pointing straight out from your tool like it's supposed to be. Uh, you could actually have that be a plus X direction if you wanted. You can define it that way. Um, in a three-point method, the plus Z direction is towards the workpiece. Again, that's just a translation out from your tool plan straight out to wherever that TCP is at. It's going to be it's still pointing straight out from where your tool plan, the same direction tool plan was. Um, the active frame st stored in the system variable is stored in this uh, menu tool num variable. Uh, we can get into where those are at if you guys want to. I'll show you where they're at. Um, active frame can be set and changed within the uh, program as needed. So it, you're going to use the param uh, parameter instructions. Um, that's within your program. You can use the parameter instruction to change which one's active. Or you can do it manually by pushing the shift and then the coordinate button. All right. So again, you got your major axis, X, Y, and Z. I'm going to move your tool center point. Um, that's the course adjustment, basically. And your minor adjustment is going to control the orientation of the end of tool, in arm tool. That's what EOAT, EAOT stands for, end of arm tool. I thought that was backwards. It's EOAT. I wonder if EAOT sounded at all. <laughs> Typo. Um, all right. And so you rotate your EOAT about the, the yaw, pitch, or roll the axis with the minor axis. Here, there is a little bit of a error here. Um, if your TCP is not um, center of the rotation of your joint, which it's not going to be, it's not going to, if, as you rotate those minor axis, it's not going to center that rotation around that TCP. Unless you, well, I guess if you have it set on tool um, frame as your, your jog method. And it will. Your yaw pitch and roll will center around whatever tool you have selected. If you have it selected based on the tool flange, it'll it will, it'll be offset and it'll center on the, the center of the tool flange instead. Um let's see. The uh, XYZ define the location of the tool frame origin relative to the face plate and the WPR define the direction. We want the tool frame axis to point relative to or to the face plate. All right. Uh, default tool center point, as we all know, is right in the center of the tool flange. So until you define it to be out here at the tip, all your rotation will be based off of right here in the center. So XYZ defines the location of the tool frame origin relative to face plate. And we'll pitch you all relative to uh, the face plate. So there it is by default. Um, again, I'm pretty sure that's with the, the joint six at zero degrees, joint four at zero degrees. Your x axis is pointing straight up and your z is pointing straight out. Joint five, I guess, would be at zero degrees too in this case. All right, so the two. The so tool offset data is basically to tell the, um, again, to tell the tool frame origin to be displaced out to the middle of the gripper you're adding here. There's an example of what it looks like if you don't properly set your tool. So you're assuming that your tool center points down here at the tool and you don't have it set up properly, it's actually up here. And it moves kind of like that, move it in arc. So your, your linear move would be between the point where you started at and the point you end at on your tool flange. In this case, they've actually rotated that point. So you notice the X is pointing in this direction here, X is pointing straight up here. But it's still a linear move because the actual point at the center of the origin on both these is centered all the straight line. So you can, you can have a linear move that changes rotation. All right, setting up tool frames, you got the three point method. And the six point method, and then there's also the direct entry method. So if you have a tool that comes straight out off of your uh, tool flange, like the pointer in our 
uh, in our predefined work cell I made, you can actually do that manually and just take a measurement from the center of the tool flange out to the tip of that tool and, and input it manually using the direct entry method. You don't actually have to do the calibration. I'm going to recommend using one of the calibration methods to set it, obviously, because it's part of what you're learning and how to do is how to set that in a, a Fernet controller. And here's some examples of orientation when you go to set it. Um, first point straight up and down on the probe you're teaching it with. Second and third points are going to be at an angle. Um, obviously, two different angles. You don't want them to be pointing straight at each other like this. You want to be pointing at angles that don't point straight at each other. But they still have to point straight at that point. And they're only showing three points in this demonstration because that fourth one would be coming right back at us. So it'd be hard to see the rest of them. All right, so selecting a tool frame from the job menu. Uh, the jogging menu provides a method to check and change the following jogging information. Um, currently, the currently selected frame number of each frame tool or jog jog or user is shown. Right. So currently selected group number is shown. Um, that's not here, but it's not showing it in this picture. Um, currently selected subgroup type for the robot uh, X, or EXT, you'll you'll see a screen similar to the following. So that'd be a robot or external axis. All right, here's an example right here. This, this is what it really looks like. This would be tool one, jog frame one, user group one, uh, and group one. Um, it, you hit the shift plus coordinate to access that. And then you can uh, use your up and down arrows to access whichever one you want to change. Then type in a number to change it. Then hit enter. There's another example showing tool center point being cal uh, calibrated. This device down here at the bottom, um, get what it's called now. It's got, it's got to do with uh, finding the center point of the the TCP um, on a welding tool. I forget exactly how it works, but basically the, the tool touches down to that tip and it conducts electricity through it. We do actually have that if we want to play with importing that in and using it instead to set your TCP. It, it is in the graphics library. So this is basically after the TCP has been calibrated, now it's offset to where the center of your work is at. I would have put that right between the jaws personally. That's a little bit offset outside of where I'd normally have it. It'd be right centered between the two jaws. Here's an example of what happens after you calibrate it correctly. Now your TCP is actually out here. For a linear move, your robot arm still swings around like it did before, but your TCP is held linear along that plane. All right, and here's an example of finding the six point method. So normally your Z would be pointing straight out here. And they're not actually showing how that's done. Example how it's done. So basically what you do is you, you once you set your point here, You'll jog it out in the X direction, set a new point, then you'll jog it back to the center, so wherever your point was at, and jog it in the Z direction, set a new point. And that gives you your six points. So you got four points plus this point and that point. Now you have your X direction facing this way and your Z direction facing that way. Which I'm not sure why you'd want that. Typically, you want your Z direction facing straight out from your tool. And your X and Y would follow your right hand rule from that. So for X, or for Z is facing straight out, or X plus would actually be over here, or Y plus would be down here. 
So it could, I mean, technically you can rotate those any way you want them. Sure, what that slide's about is just pointing out where your tool center point is again. I think they did here is they got X is pointing in the direction of the robot X and Y is pointing in the direction of the robot Y. That's making me wonder if by default it does that, but I don't think so. We'll have to test that and see. I know normally your Z is going to just translate straight out from your tool faceplate. It looks like when they calibrated it, they got X and Y is matched up. Actually, this one's upside down. Oh, that Y plus should be over here. You do your right hand rule. That Z is going straight out, X plus this way, Y plus this way. This is, this is a typo here. Um, okay. Sure, what's going with this slide either? It's showing the world frames going uh, up and out like it should. And um, this is your default. Z plus would be coming out here, X plus be coming out here. Sure, what this 45 degree rotation is about. That's in the book. Not sure. Probably another example of what you could do with the X and Z or the, the six point method, you could redefine your tool frame to match your old frame, but I'm not sure why you'd do that. Yeah. All right, here's another example showing our normal old frame. That is correct. And then the tool frame been defined in the middle of that tool with a Z plus going down and the X plus going in the direction of the old frame X. Uh, that makes your Y directions opposite because your Z is going down instead of up. So the first lab for today is obviously going to be kept uh, calibrating a tool frame using a three-point method, uh, direct entry method, or on any robot and or a six-point method with six-axis robots. So I'm going to recommend just using the three-point method. Well, it's four-point, but it says three-point in here. Um, but if you want to experiment with the six-point, go for it. The direct entry is too simple. <laughs> you just go in and enter the numbers and you really don't learn much from that. Uh, after the tool has been taught, you're going to jog it in world and tool. So you go back to where you hold your shift down right here. Shift and hit coordinates to change your tool number. And then you, you hit coordinate without hitting shift. You know, change your, the tool, uh, the jog mode up here. Let's say you'll change that to world. And you'll jog it around. Now you want a tool. Why is this world? You think you'd want a tool to jog it and see it spin around that point. Yeah, I would recommend putting it in tool mode instead of world. All right. Um, use a frame. So we all know work objects by now. User frames are the exact same concept. Um, so you're just going to teach a frame on a, on a surface. And i would use that work object that I gave you uh, on the tabletop. We don't have to record those points in space like we did with the ABV lab. 
but you can still use it as a reference for your work object and see if you can get it to jog along that those edges. Um, so it can be set up in any location with any orientation, any positions are recorded in in user frame, right? If no user frame is specified, the robot controller will use world frame by default. All positions in the user frame are recorded with respect to the origin of the frame. So whenever you set up a user frame, you select your user frame here. There. You select that, and everything that you record after that is the, the offsets are from the user frame origin. Backwards, sorry. Anyway. All right, so if the origin and location of frame changes, positions change with the frame. So, in other words, if you go in and you change your user frame after you've already defined positions based on the user frame location, all those positions will move in space. Um, and again, there's a menu uh, variable, a system variable that they all save under called menu frame. Um, and we're way past version 5.xx, worked at 9 something. Um, there was 9 frames maximum back then. I don't think it's changed a whole lot. I think it's up to maybe 16. I have to double check. All right. The orientation, yaw pitch and roll is the rotation about the, the x, y, and z axis again of the reference frame. When a position is recorded, its location and orientation is automatically recorded as x, y, z yaw pitch and roll relative to origin of the frame that is being used. And the XYZ is measured in millimeters and the yaw pitch roll is measured in degrees. Um, the combination of all that, XYZ yaw pitch roll is called the Cartesian coordinate system. Active uh, frame stored in system variable menu frame them again. Um, active frame can be set and changed within teach pinnet program using uh, param use parameter instruction. That's yeah, I think it probably shows you how to do that in the book. If it does not, we'll cover that. We're going to set up the user frames in the three-point method, four-point method, or direct entry method. An example, user frame is in this offset is or is this offset in XYZ I'll pitch and roll? Uh, let's see. So here's your world coordinates again. The user frame. Uh, so is these still pointing straight up? The X is in the same direction. Y opposite. Um, the typo again. This, this should be at y positive and this should be y negative by the right hand rule. Huh. Okay. I'm going to see if I can modify that one too. All right. So this one basically the the whole thing's at an off angle from it. It's still the the axes are generally the same directions but you're translating it to a slightly different angle from the, this plane to this plane. That's opposite two. Okay. And the world frame backwards on this one. Wow. These actually come from Fanuc. I don't know if somebody's manipulated them since I got them, but apparently they've got the axis all wrong again. Because if by right hand rule, this should be negative. This one should be negative. But this is basically showing you the difference in the planes. Um, you create the X plane by the, the 
uh, combination of the X and the Z. Um, and so in this case, the X plane is out here. Because your Z direction is going out that way. So yeah, your X and Z are going this way. Your X plane is being translated from here to here. The Y plane is a combination of X and Y. Right? So in this case, the Y plane is going to be translated from here to here. The Z plane is a combination between Y and Z. Y lies, Y and Z both lie within that Z plane. Once this is all said and done, whenever you're jogging in the, the Z direction, you're jogging in this Z plane in your user frame. If you went back to world, you'd be jogging in this plane right here. All right, a jog frame can be set up in any location with any orientation. It's used when a part is oriented oriented differently from the world frame. It allows jogging along X, Y, and Z axis of the part. Difference basically between a jog frame and a world frame is jog frame is used for setting up and user frame is used for actually during programming. They're basically the same thing otherwise. Uh, setting up jog frames, again, you've got the three-point method and the direct entry method. An example of doing that. We'll go through that here in a little bit. It, it, it walks you through step-by-step step on how to do this stuff in the book. Um, okay. We'll sit down and go through that as soon as we get, get done going through the presentation. Um, so the jog frame is defined parallel to the part. Again, you define it just like you would a, a user frame, only you're using it for jogging around the robot. I don't see a real use for jog frame because you can still jog the robot user frame. Um, but they do have both available. Uh, so the next lab would be to set up and create a user frame and a jog frame um, using a three-point method for both. They do say jog frame is optional. Basically, you're doing the same thing you did in the user frame. 